In today's video, we are going to talk about how to knit a scarf with loop yarn. This is called finger knitting or loop yarn knitting. It has a few different names. So this video is going to look at specifically how to knit a garter stitch pattern, which is what we have here in this sample, and how if you knit enough of this, you'll have a whole scarf. So uh, stick around and let's look at what I did to make this. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Patty and I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. My channel is devoted to all sorts of crafts and baking and generally just living that analog life in this crazy digital world. And if you also <laughs> like living analog, and I'm sure that you do, if you're watching a knitting video, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel, like today's video, and hang out with us. It is super fun and you'll learn lots of stuff. In my last loop yarn knitting video, I talked about how to uh, knit and purl using loop yarn. So if you're brand new to loop yarn, then I'm going to link over to that video and I would suggest you go ahead and watch that first and then you'll understand how to knit and how to purl with this yarn and kind of just how the yarn is set up and how it works and all of that stuff. In the description box below, I'm going to link over to a free pattern that is from Joanne Fabrics. It's using a Bernat yarn. You can use any brand of yarn that you like. It just has to be this loop yarn style of yarn. But they've got a nice free pattern over there for a scarf. And I thought, let's just talk about how to make that particular project. To make this project, you'll need a couple of things. You're going to need at least two skeins of this loop yarn. You're going to want to have um, tapestry needles and you're going to need some scissors. So the needles we'll use for weaving in the ends. And something that I do that is a little bit different from other people is that I, I do a lot longer tail. I like a longer tail. It gives me more, um, more material for weaving in, which I like. Uh, I like to really weave it in well, then things don't come apart on me. So that's a big difference between the way I'm working and the way other people are doing this. Uh, they're doing just like little short bitty tails like that. And that's really just not enough to weave in. And I think it's hard to do it with just your fingers. So you definitely want to invest in a set of these needles. This is just a Clover brand needle and you can get them at any craft store. So essentially if we knitted the whole scarf, it would be like this, but two full skeins. I just wanted to have a nice large piece of the fabric so that you could really see how it looks. You'll also see it when you click over to look at the project on the other website. But I wanted you to see it also in this video. So, okay, let's put this to the side. I'm just going to get that out of the way. In knitting, something that can be like a huge hang up is learning to read patterns. And, uh, you know, I get it. It's not easy to write them. It's not easy to understand them. And if you're having a little bit of trouble reading uh, patterns, do not feel bad about that. Uh, it's not, it's not you. It's just, um, you're taking something that's super visual and writing it in these like technical instructions and it's just not an easy thing to do. So here's what I'm going to suggest to you. I'm going to uh, go over the pattern and I'm going to just hop in and start making this. Now, if you need instructions on um, more specifically uh, knitting and purling, 
go ahead and watch the other video because that will really get into that whole part of this. For this video, we're going to jump right in to reading the pattern. And all I did was cut and paste this from the website and print it out. So I've got it right here with me. And um, we're going to just get started right away. The first thing that you'll want to do is to just uh, separate some of your loops so that you've got a longer tail. I prefer that long tail for weaving in. If you just want to do a short tail, that is entirely up to you. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't use up that much of your product. So I would just go ahead and do the long tail and then you know you have what you need. To start this pattern, we need 12 loops. So it's a 12 stitch cast on. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that is the width of your project. Now let's look at our instructions. It says count twelve loops for your foundation row, noting that the yarn end is at the far right and all loops are facing upwards. Okay. First row, working from left to right Pull the 13th loop, which is this one, from the working yarn, which is this yarn because it's attached to the ball. Pull the 13th loop up through the 12th loop from behind to create a knit stitch. Pull the next loop from the working yarn up through the next loop of the foundation row. Continue in this manner to the end of the row. Do not turn the work. 12 stitches in the row. Okay, I know, it sounds like a lot of stuff. Basically what it's telling you is, count out your 12 stitches and then take the next one, which is the 13th, and just come around and you're gonna pull it through. This is how we do uh, net in loop yarn. The trickiest thing with this loop yarn is to make sure that you're actually getting the next loop from the working yarn into the next loop of your project yarn, your foundation. Now it's going to look like a mess. That's okay. What you do is just kind of anchor your, your edge of your project and pull all of your little loops gently away from you. I suggest doing this on a tabletop so that you can really see what you're doing and just pull gently all the way away from you. The first row of any project is always a little bit weird so just pull everything up then it's nice and neat. You don't need to strangle your work but you just do want to gently straighten everything out. Okay, the second row working from right to left with the working yarn in the front because on this row we're going to purl and when we purl we bring the yarn in the front with the yarn in the front pull the next loop which is here Pull the next loop from the working yarn towards the back through the last stitched work on the previous row. <laughs> oh boy, I know it sounds really confusing. Okay, pull next loop from working yarn towards back through next stitch. Repeat across the end of the row, do not turn. Okay, so this means uh, just continue leaving your work laying flat this way. Take the next loop put it through from front to back because when we're making what we're calling a purl stitch in a loop yarn knitting we put the yarn in the front of the project 
which is also what we do when we're doing regular knitting. Purl is in the front, knit is in the back, the yarn. And again, if you need a little more instruction, please go watch the other video. And all I'm doing is running through the loops Okay, now it's going to go to the back. So we're going to do the same thing where we're just going to lightly snug all of our little stitches. Oh, here it is. You want to make sure you're grabbing the proper loop as you're pulling up. It can be a little bit tricky to find what's actually the loop of your project and what is a loop of your um, the stitch. I don't know if that makes sense. And I will tell you what else is tricky. What else is tricky is you want to be really careful that when you get to the edge of a row or the end of a row that you definitely take that next loop from the working yarn and put it into what really is the end. So let's count to make sure that we still have 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, so we're still on track. We're going to go back to uh, the knit stitch. This is what they're calling the third row. Third row, working left to right with the working yarn in the back, so it's behind our project. Pull the next loop from the working yarn from behind through the last stitch worked in the previous row and repeat all the way across. So basically we're just knitting this whole row and you just want to make sure that you are properly identifying the next loop of your project, which is here, and where is the actual loop on the, uh, the working yarn. It's just a little tricky to see it. So I highly recommend that you do this on a tabletop with adequate light. I think this would be like really hard to do in a dark room like if you're trying to watch a movie or something in your lap I just really think that would be a challenge now we have a whole row of knit and we just want to pull up on our stitches so that we can see what we have and I'm not you know pulling this really hard I'm just pulling it so it's snug and I can really see all of the stitches because you can see, I mean, it's really easy to get these loops confused with these loops. So just be mindful of that. And count again, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So we're still on track. And according to this pattern, then we just repeat rows two and three until the scarf measures 70 inches, ending on the second row, which means you want to end on a purl row. I would actually end it on a knit row because this is a knit row, but it's not my pattern. Okay, we're going to purl it back. Let's talk about how to add a new skein of yarn to this project because you are going to have to add at least one skein to it. So you're going to need two skeins, so at some point you are going to run out. Here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Even if it means you're going to lose a little bit of the yarn, when you add 
the new skein do it at the end of a row and I always like to have all of my ends on one side so let's just knit back let's make sure that we still have 12 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh Okay, we lost something in there. Okay, we've missed something. Oh, there. Okay. So I missed one down there. So if you count at the end of each row, you'll know you have everything. <laughs> and if you're doing a blanket, it is a lot of counting, but you want to make sure that you're not losing stitches as you work. Okay, now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we've got it. Okay. Let's pretend we ran out. So we're going to snip our loops. ready to add our new skein of yarn and I just think it's a good practice to have your tails all on the same side everything is going where it should be what I want you to notice is that now we're going to be going back this way and we're on a purl row so we're going to want this new yarn to be in the front the first thing we're going to do is to just kind of uh, I would say do four loops that's just my preference. Nip your loops. And there you go. Now, bring your yarn into the front of the project. And what we're going to do is purl with the new yarn. I'm interrupting this already made video to refilm the bind off on this project. And I'm doing that because I just never liked the way it came out on uh, this sample. And uh, I just don't want to put something out that I'm not 100% happy with. So I've decided to uh, refilm this part of the video and then once we do the bind off, I'll return to the original video. When we get to the end of our project, we have all these little loops and we need to do something to secure them so that our project is then ready to use or wear or whatever it is that we're going to do. And in this case, it's going to be a scarf. So we want this end to be secure so that when we wear our scarf, we don't have these loose loops hanging everywhere. As I had mentioned to you before, I really like to have all of my ends on one side. And this is the same case on this project. So the yarn, working yarn is over here. And what we're going to do is to clip it. And we'll get that out of the way. And then as I have shown you before, you're going to separate your loops and we're doing this to create a longer tail for purposes of weaving in because we like a nice long tail for weaving it just works better okay so that's all done now when you go to bind off you're going to work from the opposite side of where your tail is located. So in this case, our tail is to the right and 
we're going to start on the left. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to start at this side and we're going to just do two loops at a time and work our way across. So we're going to take this loop and insert it into that loop. One stitch is bound off. So what you're always doing is you're always taking the loop on the right and inserting it into the loop on the left. And we're just going to work our way across the loop on the right to the loop on the left and then pull it over. And you can see how this is giving us a nice secure end. And you just go all the way across, loop on the right, through the loop on the left. Loop on the right, through the loop on the left, all the way across. This is the same kind of bind off you would do if you were doing a blanket. It's no different. Okay, then when we get to the end, we have one loop remaining. And then we take our tail and we just go through that loop just like that and pull it through. And then that secures the last loop. And then we're going to weave in this end just like we're weaving all the rest of the ends. And now we can just resume <laughs> the video as I originally filmed it for you. And uh, that's how the end of your, your project or your scarf is going to look. So, okay, now I feel like I can sleep at night. I have done a much better job of showing you that bind off. The weaving process is exactly like I would do in any garter stitch sample. And I'm going to just get that yarn into my tapestry needle. And what I'm going to do is to come up under this purl bump and down on the next one. And up and down. And you're just going to do a few, just enough to secure the work. just like that. And then we're going to cut fairly close to the end and it works right in. And then you turn it over and it's totally invisible. That's how we knit this garter stitch scarf project. I hope you found that helpful. Just remember to keep all of your yarn tails at one side when you join a new yarn. Make sure that you join on an end and not in the middle. And when you weave in, just weave in all around the little purl bumps on the back side. You're going to want to pick a side that is going to be your back and a side that's going to be your front. And once you get two skeins of this yarn together, you will have a full scarf. I sure hope that is helpful for you. If you have questions, drop them below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, and in the meantime, just get some loop yarn and just practice making knit and purl stitches and I think that it will make more sense to you. This is the kind of thing that you really have to work with to understand it. I think it's a lot easier to just do it <laughs> than to read the instructions. So that's, uh, that's, that's kind of my take on it. 
Okay, that's it. I really hope that was helpful and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.